Microsoft is coming after Apple with their new Surface Pro 11 that includes Qualcomm's new Snapdragon X Elite. Now, I have always been a fan of the Surface Pro machines. They've been good, but they have a fan in there. The battery life has not been good, and Microsoft has tried to work with Qualcomm before with their ARM-based machines, but unfortunately, when we tested them, the benchmarks sucked compared to the iPad and the real world experience was much worse than the benchmarks. So because of that, iPads have still been so good as long as it works for you. And now Apple released their M4 iPad Pros, which are absolutely insane hardware wise. But the issue comes in in terms of the software because unfortunately, even though we have so much power, so much performance, Apple still has not done anything with the software, which makes it one expensive machine. So how do these two stack up? And is Microsoft finally going to have the killer all-in-one device? Well, it seems like they might. I'm gonna give you guys all of the differences and of course, we have a lot of these X Elite machines ordered, so make sure you guys are subscribed. But from the looks of it, this is one impressive beast. Now, it still looks very similar, but we have a new updated keyboard, which now allows it to be used detached. Now, the new Magic Keyboard is amazing. You have aluminum up top, you have the full magnetic track trackpad, which is just like on a Mac. We have the function keys. That is great. Um, and I like how it is set up. You can adjust the angle. It's all one piece. But that new Microsoft keyboard where you can actually detach it is so convenient because if you want to hook up the Surface to a display, you can detach the keyboard and use that separately. Um, and that is very nice. A lot of flexibility. Now, talking about pricing, if you want to get the OLED display on the Surface, um, well, that is a big upgrade. Now, it also gets you the better chip instead of the plus chip, but then looking at price points, they pretty much line up at the mid-level. Now, with the iPad, if you upgrade to one terabyte, you actually go from eight gigs of RAM up to 16 usable, and you also get the more powerful chip, whereas with the Surface, you can spend less money and you could still get the X Elite. Now, of course, both of these are tablets. You have multiple cameras included on them. One thing I like about the Surface is even if you're using it as a tablet, you get that kickstand that you could pop open. So that is convenient and it is built in. But in terms of thickness and weight, we have a big difference. The Surface is thick, a lot thicker than the insanely thin new iPad. Uh, and it weighs a lot more. I mean, that thing weighs close to two pounds. So it is a heavy beast of a machine compared to the new iPads, which are so light. They're so comfortable to use in your hand. This thing is way more portable. And even though you can get an OLED on the surface, they don't really compare because Apple is using the new tandem OLED screens, which are the best, most advanced screens on the market. They get a thousand nits of standard brightness, 1600 peak, whereas the surface is at 600. So we're still gonna have the same differences where HDR content on the iPad is gonna look so much brighter than on the Surface like we've seen in the past in our comparisons. And with that, the Surface, they're always a lot more reflective than the iPad. So using these outdoors, the iPad is gonna be on a whole nother level. And the same thing goes with the speakers. Even though this iPad is so insanely thin, the speakers are shockingly good. You guys can go ahead and listen to the last comparison we did. <laughs> You guys heard those differences. The Surface has stereo speakers compared to quad speakers with dedicated woofers. So the speakers are a lot better and the overall media experience is much nicer on the iPad. 
Now, one thing that the iPad is missing that I really wish they would have given us with this new update at this high price point is dual USB-C ports built in. Now, it has a Thunderbolt port, so it is very powerful, whereas the Surface does not have Thunderbolt with the X Elite. It is USB uh, 4, which that is nice, and I think for most people it's gonna be plenty, but it has two ports. That is nice. Apple could have done it with this, and personally, I would rather have two USB 4 ports than a Thunderbolt. You have a lot more capability. Of course, with the Magic Keyboard, we have that charging port, but it's only for charging. It is not for any kind of pass-through or connecting SSDs or anything like that. And now, let's go ahead and talk about that X Elite chip. Everybody's been waiting for this. We've been talking about it a lot and it is an excellent chip, but then Apple had to release the M4 and do such a killer job stepping up the competition. Now, in terms of actual performance, when we look at multi-core for Geekbench, they are very, very close. And honestly, I think for long-term um, consistent renders or anything that has a full load for a long time, the Surface is probably gonna be better because it does have a fan built in. Now the new iPads have 20% improvement in terms of thermals, and in our testing, they did throttle less than the M2 model, so that is great. But when we look at that and you look at that MacBook Air, it still will throttle quite a bit after an extended load compared to having a fan and a thicker device. That is just going to be better. Now, in terms of single core performance, the Surface is gonna be good with the X Elite chip, but the M4 is on a whole nother level, the best out of any computer. So that is crazy impressive. And even the M3 is faster than the Surface. The Surface is more on the level of the M2 with that uh, Qualcomm X Elite chip built in. Now on the graphic side, the iPad will be better. And of course there's a lot of iPad games, but one disappointment that I've had is even with the most demanding games, they're just not set up for such a powerful device. There's not a lot of graphics options out there that can make use of all the performance. And of course there's so many variety of um, iPhones and iPads where the people making these games, most of them are designed to focus on a middle ground or lower end devices, so you can't really make use of it. Now, as far as neural engines, we still have to see with our own testing, but based on the specs, the X Elite has more uh, tops as far as processing than even the M4. Now, that has to do with workload and how they're testing it, so we're gonna see, but the AI performance is gonna be huge, and that's what Microsoft is focusing on, that's what Qualcomm is focusing on, and of course, that actually saves battery power as well. And looking at battery life ratings, the Surface is rated higher than the iPad. Uh, both are gonna have killer battery life and so much better than the previous Intel devices. And now we have to talk about the software because that's my biggest disappointment with the iPad Pro with the M4. The hardware is incredible. Honestly, if this had a desktop OS, even if it wasn't full Mac OS, this would be my everyday, all day device. It is incredible, the performance, but it is limited. Whereas with the Surface, you have a full desktop OS. Now, in the past, it ran terrible with the Qualcomm chips, and that's just because Microsoft was not taking it seriously. Your benchmarks could be okay, but the real world performance was horrendous. <laughs> Even though you can use all your apps, it just wouldn't work or great, and then some apps actually wouldn't work at all. Now that was a few years ago and Microsoft is now taking it serious. There's a lot of promise. It should work great. They're not even putting Intel chips in these new devices. So as far as we know, it's gonna work way better than before and it should be completely usable now. So we will see in the future, but just having the ability to run anything on here is gonna be really, really nice and a huge win for Microsoft. Now, Apple could do the same thing. Even if they wanted to use iPad OS, they could let you run full um, Mac OS applications. All the hardware is the same. All of the software has been written in the last couple of years to work properly on Apple Silicon. They just don't want you to do this. And honestly, I think that if Apple did that, 
they would destroy the Surface machine other than the few apps that are just on Windows exclusively. Then of course you could run Parallels if you wanted to, but Apple doesn't wanna do that. Whereas Microsoft is taking the other route, they've been doing it for a long time, they had Intel chips, that machine wasn't the fastest, but a lot of people loved it. But now you're gonna get the best of both worlds. You're gonna get way better battery life. And they actually say 90% better performance than the previous Surface. That is awesome. And you have that tablet form factor and you can use that as a full computer as well. So if you're spending this much money, at least you get that full experience. Whereas with the iPad, you're spending a ton of money and you don't get that. So I'm really excited about these new Surface devices. I think finally, after so many years of trying, this is gonna be the real winner. You guys let me know your thoughts. What is the better overall machine? The Surface with the new Snapdragon chip or the M4 iPad? If you were gonna spend the money, which one would you buy? I wanna hear your guys' opinions down below. And go ahead and click that circle above. We have a ton of great videos coming out. Check out that video right over there. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next one.